Hello, my friends. I am the speaker for the dead. Coming to you today with a review for Book of Boba Fett, Episodes 1 and 2. I'd like to apologize. I'm suffering from a really, really shitty cold right now. Uh, so if it sounds like I'm talking out of my sinuses, it's because I am. Uh, but because I'm an essential worker, I still have to drive drunk whether I'm sick or not. So, here I am. So, uh, let's let's get into Boba Fett. Now, I want to start this off by saying I, I am a big Star Wars fan, but I am not nearly as big as I know so many others are. Uh, I had only recently got into the EU. Um, I always was just more along the lines of the films and, and stuff that was directly coming out from Lucasfilm, um, mainly the, the original films um, and then the prequels and stuff like that. Um, so I, I will be the first to admit I do not have a great amount of knowledge of the character of Boba Fett other than what we saw of him in the original films. Um, now, I've been kind of amazed at what's been happening around this series. Um, because it, it seems like, once again, it has brought out the extremes in a lot of people. Um, a lot of people that I respect and, and stream with and, and am involved with are really upset about Boba Fett and uh, what, what they're doing with his character in this TV show. Um, and, and having watched both the episodes, don't worry, there, there's going to be no spoilers. I'm not talking directly about the episodes. Um, I may break them down at some future point, but maybe not. Um, but but here, here's my thing, um, and then you're getting, so as, as I was saying, there, there, you've got the extremes, you've got people really upset, and then you've got people on the other side that are just blanket amnesty kind of people, um, don't care, like, they, 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 it doesn't bother them, they're not upset about, <clears throat> about what's going on, uh, they love it, or they're praising it, or they're overly happy, or whatever, they're just like completely on board. Um, now me, I'm more of the middle of the road kind of person on this particular subject. Because I know very little about his character other than what we see of him in Empire and Return of the Jedi. Um, I, I don't have a lot of of information from which to base his character on. But I will tell you, I, I, I do kind of trust John Favreau, who is writing most of these episodes. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of taking the long view at this point. Um, I am, I am going to do a wait and see what happens. Um, I haven't seen anything in the shows that necessarily destroys the character for me yet. Um, now, I know that there's a lot of people that are really upset about this second episode where he's teaching the Sand People stuff. I, I, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I like I said, I'm going to try not to give any spoilers away or anything, but this is out there. I mean, if you're not hearing about this, then you don't care about Star Wars and you're not interested and you're not watching this video. So, but there, there's a point at which he's sitting on a speeder bike trying to teach sand people how to ride a speeder. And he's like, I, and he bounces up and down going, you ride it like a bantha. And everybody's really upset about this. <laughs> Acting like this destroys his character. That this, 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 this is the worst thing ever. This is old person pretending like you just, like smiling like an imbecile. Me personally, in that moment, I saw him as a dad teaching kids who knew absolutely nothing about this how to do something. 
um, having been a dad and having six kids and having to teach children who, uh, who are blank slates for the most part about something, you have to make it fun and interesting. Um, like I said, now I think they could have done that better than what they did, but you have to, you, when you're teaching somebody like that who is completely clueless about what you're doing, I mean, it'd be like trying to teach my five-year-old daughter how to ride my Heritage Softail Harley Davidson. Uh, she's not going to get it at, at any meaningful level, so I'm going to have to dumb it down to her level because she has no clue how motorcycles work. She understands bicycles and stuff like that, but I, she, if she asked me a question, Daddy, how do you make it go? I'd have to make it fun and entertaining. Now, these are adult sand people. These are brutal killers. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, so, I, I don't think they had to go that far. But me personally, I thought it was kind of funny. Almost like him making fun of the sand people. I took it in a different way. I mean, ba basically talking down to them like they were little kids. Have to ride like a bat, but, you know, I mean... So I didn't see it for the destruction of the character that so many people are seeing that as. Um, now, I have, to, I have to say this. The first episode, um, one, if you're going to watch it, you have to go sit in a dark room to watch it. Because much of it is filmed in, like, total freaking darkness. And you can't hardly see what the hell's going on in the episode. I'm like... Did the guy that directed the finale of Game of Thrones do this? Because nobody could see what the hell was going on in that sequence with the big battle either. It's like, why didn't they go get the guy that directed the night scene of battle in Lord of the Rings Two Tower or Lord of the Rings Two Towers to do this? That's how you do a scene in the dark. You still have to be able to see what the hell's going on to get the effect. And I felt like that wasn't really done in this episode. So, I mean, half of, the, half of it, I'm like, I, 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 okay, I'm hearing sound, but I have no idea what's happening. So, here, here's the deal. I am not seeing this as the travesty that so many people are. Now, to those who are really upset about this, let me just say, I, I understand I understand, and, and I respect your views and your opinions on this. Um, because I've been there. I, I've been there when I watched a character that I knew a lot about get just bastardized. And how angry that made me. So a lot of this may come from just my lack of understanding about the character of Boba Fett. Um... But I, I do agree with uh, something Stone Loki said, and, and I think many people are saying. The Boba Fett I knew from the original trilogy was a cold, calculating SOB who didn't care. He was a bounty hunter. People didn't matter to him. They were just a means to an end. He just cared Keep about the money, two miles. the, the right. getting his due, getting paid for bringing people in. He was cold and calculating, and he did his job irregardless of, of, of anything. That's why Vader has to turn to him in Empire and go, no disintegrations. That tells you what kind of character Boba Fett was. That like, jobs going sideways, and rather than let somebody get away, he'll just, he'll just wax their ass. He'll just vaporize them. And deal with the consequences later. So that's the kind of Boba Fett I think everybody expects to see. Keep right. Now, I could see him being somewhat different 
in this because they use a rebirth metaphor and I'm sure I'm not the first person. I have not watched any other reactions other than the one show that Loki did about this where he was really upset. I hadn't seen the episode yet Drive so I wasn't four, sure. Point, I just five took his word for what was going on. Keep right. Because I trust Loki and uh, so so the, the thing is, is that they kind of do a rebirth scene where he escapes from the Sarlacc pit. That was one of the few things I could see in the first episode. <laughs> Just kidding. Wasn't that bad. But, um, and, and I mean, facing death changes you. It, you. You go talk to anybody who's had a near-death experience or who has literally... In, in his case, stared into the gaping jaws of death. It changes you. It makes you a different person. But I also know one other thing about... See, I didn't see them humanizing the Tusken Raiders as much as... as him gaining the respect of other vicious killers. Now, it's kind of made clear to me in the second episode that this is something of an unusual Tusken Raiders tribe. That most of them are just killers. They're just brutal killers. This tri particular tribe is different in that way. Um, so, I, I, I didn't feel like they were humanizing all of the Tuscans, more of the fact that they were that they were humanizing this one particular tribe, um, which that didn't bother me nearly as much because even that even the one of the leaders or whatever the Sand People say most of our other tribes survive by killing alone, not taking prisoners and making them dig for water and, and stuff and and whatever. But that this group of killers, uh, he, he becomes connected to this other group of killers and, and survivalists, basically, which is what he was. He, he just survived on bounties and stuff like that. Um, so, I mean, he has an affinity for this group of people because they both survive and do basically the same thing to survive. Uh, like I said, I'm not excusing what they're doing. I'm just Keep telling you that's how I saw it. Five miles. Keep right. Um, he gets sent out to dig stuff. He, he, he does something that gains the respect of the tribe. And as any good killer or assassin would, he's, he learns from those who were killers. He learns the skills of them. Because any... Any smart assassin or killer will always, or, or soldier or whatever, is always looking to make themselves better, more lethal, more capable. It is, it is only a stupid person in that job who refuses to change or adapt to the situation. So I would just say, I'm, I'm giving this right now something of a pass um, until I see more right. until I see where this is going I don't really have a problem with how they're treating Boba Fett um, I personally I think they should have went and got a younger actor to play Boba Fett and uh, but that looked very much like um uh, this Rodriguez or whatever his name is that, that miles. You know, did the did the voice and everything for the, the clones and, and all that. Um, I, I I think that would have been a better thing to do. Um, someone who would have fit the role a little bit better and had a little bit more youth and vitality and, and ability to kind of do stuff that this this actor who is aging and and stuff just can't do. That, but that's me personally. Because I, I don't actually know how old Boba Fett would be in this timeline. In, you know, in, in, in the time after the Empire. 
which is basically where we are. Because it doesn't really tell us how long it took him to get out of the Sarlacc pit. So we don't know if the Empire's fallen yet. I'm just assuming that it has. But we know it's in that general time timeline. Um, but but yeah, I just I see him coming back, taking over Boba or taking over Jabba Hut, Jabba the Hutt's territory. Exit right. Uh, then killing, turn left. killing the fat guy um, who probably should have been dead in the sail barge, but managed to escape and somehow take over Jabba's um, territory. He walks in, kills him, takes over his territory. Um, that's where I have my major problem with this storyline, this, this story arc, as they are, are doing it. When Jabba is running the show, his palace is full. Full of bounty hunters, assassins, killers, um, sycophants, um, band members. I mean, he projects a, an air of power and authority. Um, so, I mean, Continue. And then when, when, when Boba Fett comes in and takes over, this other guy has none of that. None of it. Doesn't have any any part of of that whole deal. And he just walks in, shoots him, and it's just like, oh, now I take over. It's like, how the hell did you get in there? I mean, it, it really? It was that simple? Anybody could just walk in, shoot the main guy, and take over? And now we, and then we see Boba Fett sitting in the throne, and people bringing him tribute and and nonsense and stuff like that, and it, it's just stupid. Um, because uh, after Boba Fett takes over, now he's sitting in an empty throne room with nobody around to protect him other than one person, one assassin that he saved the life of, and uh, nobody else. So he's going to run this vast empire of Jabba's on Tatooine with one person by his side. And a, and a, and a white weirdo droid. That's, the, that's where I have a problem. He should have come in. There should have been a room full of people. He shoots the main guy. Pulls out a thermal detonator and goes, Anybody have a problem with me being in charge? That would have come off as like, Yes, that is Boba Fett. So there are some character flaws. There are some big holes in this show that don't ring true, that don't make sense cannot run an empire with two people crime syndicate whatever you can't it's, that's no that's not a real thing so I, I'm I am sitting back and waiting to see if they they right this ship and they get back on board I didn't even have a problem with him saying Java ruled on fear and I'm gonna rule on respect because if you know anything about the the mob history of, of our illustrious planet that is not part of this universe. It's in a galaxy far, far away. Uh, you you know that that's how a lot of the mob mafiosos did their business. They, they did, did rule on fear, but it was fear out of respect. Like, you were afraid of Al Capone because you knew he was a man of his word. You knew that if you hit him, he would wipe you out. He would he would do exactly what he said he would do. There was no ambiguity. Um, it, it was like the sun rising and setting. You knew exactly how he was going to react because he was a man of in, of honor and integrity in a violent criminal sort of way. If the, if you can even apply those terms to a criminal organization, but that's how he ran his business. So I can I can see why, um, but you know, in our current climate, everything sounds like a mamby pamby, pussy eyes version of the real truth. So I, I can see why that would cause uh, disturbance in the force for a lot of people. But I I read that very differently. I read that as a I'm going to rule because people respect me. Because they know who I am, what I'll do, and that I'll keep my word. 
And if I and if somebody breaks their word to me, they're dead. You know, I I, I can see it coming that way. Um, but the problem is, is that they're not being very specific in how they're talking about that. So I'm going to wait and see on this. I hope to get be able to do a, a show where I can get on and talk with Loki because he's very much on the upset side. Um, and I totally understand. I, I That's why I want to talk to other people who may know a lot more about this character because then I might be able to understand where they're coming from because right now I'm struggling to see why they're so upset. Um, because I, I think there's enough ambiguity in this situation where we just don't know yet. We don't know how this is going to go. Maybe there'll be something that causes him to snap out of this malaise that he's in and he'll go full Boba Fett for us. Um, but he's also being smart. He's ingratiated himself. Uh, perhaps he uh, knew all along that he was going to take over Tatooine. He wanted Jabba's position. He knew Jabba was dead. Or figured he was based on him getting thrown into the Sarlacc pit. And he's ingratiating himself with the Tusken Raiders because he's going to use them as enforcers later on. <coughs> and also the Tusken Raiders are going to be grateful to him for stopping the train, stopping what's happening to them. And basically, he I mean, whether they deserve that respect or not is ir irrelevant. He's going to use them as a tool to control Tatooine. There's loads of them. And if he can band them together behind him, he's created an army. That's smart. That's smart. And if that's where they're going with this storyline, I can respect that. Because he's using something that ev that everybody... It, it's like using the Fremen in the Dune series. Everybody knows they're there, but no, nobody realizes how powerful that they actually are because they're all scattered out. They travel in single file. They do all these things. So possibly we're going to see him turn the Sand People into a fighting force to control Tatooine. I mean, I'm just going to give them a chance. And maybe I'm writing a better story in my head than the one they're going to give us. But I'm going to give John Favreau that, that shot at earning my respect on this because he did a pretty good job in Mandalorian. He gave us the first real Star Wars moment in, what, 10, 15 years with the return of Luke Skywalker in season two. I, that, that earned him some leeway in my book. I'm going to give him a chance. And if he screws it up, well, then there you go. Can't, you can't save uh, a doomed ship. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, let me know what you think about this, and we will talk to you next time. Bye now.